Hi, my name is Jacob Monet. I'm with Cornerstone Research Group, and I'll be presenting an electrical load management system that CRG is developing under an ongoing Navy Phase Two SBIR project. The goal of this effort is to more fully utilize the existing aircraft electric power source capacity on Navy aircraft, such as the B-22. So in this project, we've developed an intelligent circuit breaker panel with digitally controlled solid state devices to replace the legacy electromechanical breakers on the V-22 aircraft. Some of the specific improvements we'll discuss today include seven times greater power to weight ratio, 15 times longer mean time between failures, and roughly 65% less power dissipation as heat. Uh, the system also enables real-time load measurement, crew alerts, and diagnostics data for predictive maintenance, which reduces overall sustainment costs. And this technology can be applied not only to the V-22 aircraft, but a wide range of other military and commercial aircraft as well. CRG is an aerospace and defense company that was founded in 1997 by our president, Dr. Patrick Hood. Uh, we're located in the Dayton, Ohio area, not far from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And we have a long history of working with all the DOD agencies through SBIR and BAA contracts in, ad in addition to subcontracts and a variety of commercial contracts with most of the prime contractors. Um, CRG as a company has a pretty diverse technical staff, uh, spans five primary business areas, which maintain core competencies in the areas of aerospace systems, power and energy, medical devices and sensors, high temp composites, as well as advanced materials and manufacturing. And while we do keep CRG's core business focused on our defense customers, uh, we also have a strong history of transitioning DoD funded technology into commercial applications, uh, primarily through Rushlight Ventures, which is our venture arm for spinoff companies. And over the past decade, CRG has successfully launched five different subsidiaries that are transitioning SBIR developed technology into the commercial market. Uh, we really pride ourselves on the breadth of our technical capabilities, which lets us solve really challenging multidisciplinary technical problems for our customers uh, while still acting with the speed and agility of a small business. This is all backed by some pretty significant square footage and infrastructure in, all in the Dayton region that houses uh, both our R&D labs as well as our manufacturing scale up uh, in a number of the areas that I mentioned before. One new capability that we're particularly proud of is our new battery cell manufacturing line that's focused on uh, serving primarily DOD applications. So please take a note on that and reach out um, if you or your colleagues are looking for advanced battery cell development that's backed by uh, US manufacturing capability for any of your specific aerospace or defense needs. Going back to the original NAV Air solicitation several years ago, the Navy called out several pain points that are posing some serious challenges to all their aircraft as onboard electrical power demands continue to increase over time. Uh, because it's so difficult and expensive to increase power source capacity on a given aircraft, uh, it's critically important to make the most efficient use of the available capacity. And of course, no system is 100% reliable. So inevitably, when, for example, a generator fails and the aircraft loses some portion of its overall generation capacity, it needs a way to limit the total load, uh, which is often handled by shedding an entire bus. One of the problems is that load shedding technique can sometimes shed loads that are higher priority for a particular mission scenario, or in another case, it may shed more loads than necessary to avoid overloading the remaining generation capacity. So as a result, the Navy was seeking an advanced electrical load management system to enable a list of new features, including uh, some of the ones that are shown here, things like real-time load monitoring and crew alerts, uh, reprogrammable trip settings, automatic load shedding at the individual breaker level, as well as data logging to inform maintainers and ideally reduce their time spent troubleshooting electrical system failures. Uh, the acquisition customer for this effort is PMA 275, uh, the joint program office for V22, who has been closely involved in this effort throughout phase one and phase two, and really has been instrumental in supporting us at CRG with requirements definition and several different system integration aspects. In order to focus this SBIR effort 
on a specific operational platform, Navair selected the MV-22 Block C aircraft electrical power system for an initial case study. But as I mentioned earlier, Navair does intend to leverage the same technology in other aircraft that have similar onboard power capacity limitations. At a high level, the system that CRG has developed to date does provide some significant improvements over the legacy electromechanical breakers in the B-22. So some of those major improvements include things like complete digital control with repro reprogrammable trip characteristics, uh, real-time electrical load monitoring at the individual breaker level and at the aggregate level. Another is automated load shedding and crew alerts. And lastly, onboard data logging for troubleshooting and maintenance, which reduces sustainment costs. Here on slide five in the top right corner, we're showing a fairly generic CAD model representation of the solution that we've developed that uses solid state power controller cards, uh, all fitting within the physical space claim of the legacy circuit breaker panel on the V22. On the bottom right here, we're showing a depiction of our custom graphical user interface uh, that provides a display resembling the legacy V22 breaker panel. But more importantly, this is overlaid with a list of real-time electrical data, including voltage, current, and temperatures, as well as trip status for each individual breaker. And that really gives operators much greater insight into their aircraft electrical system status uh, compared to what they currently have. Here we have a snapshot of our overall development roadmap, beginning with the NAVAIR Phase 1 SBIR investment back in 2020, which has since progressed into the Phase 2 base effort, which is wrapping up later this year. For next steps, we do anticipate receiving the Phase 2 option funding, which will lead to additional hardware refinement and testing prior to follow-on activities, which are still being discussed with Navy and the Prime. Uh, some of the potential Phase 2 follow-on efforts are the Navy Phase 2.5 Technology Transition Pilot Program, or T2P program, um, which we have applied to as one possible funding route. And ultimately, this will be transitioned in Phase 3, um, which will need close coordination, not just with NAVAIR, but also the V-22 Prime Bell Boeing, um, most likely through a CC RAM upgrade to transition this technology into the V-22 aircraft. I also want to point out here that Navy's investment has led to a separate development effort already for CRG with NASA uh, for a high voltage uh, circuit protection device that wrapped up late last year. And as a result, we're already in the process of receiving phase three NASA funding, as well as commercializing a variant of this technology through Electrotech, which is CRG's spinoff company that's focused on commercializing CRG's electric power and propulsion technologies to electric aviation platform developers. So we're obviously very excited about that. Um, and really it highlights how important CRG's spin-off model is to find those early adopters and commercial outlets for our technology while it makes its way through the multiple steps of DOD development and acquisition processes. Here we have a table showing some of the key features and benefits of our electrical load management system or ELMS on the right compared with the baseline circuit breaker panel on the left column. So these digitally controlled devices provide several built-in features that I mentioned earlier, things like reprogrammable trip settings, real-time load monitoring and crew alerts, and diagnostic data logging. Um, but in addition, these devices provide a significant increase in power density, which reduces weight in the near term, but also paves the way for additional onboard power capacity in the future. On top of that, the solid state devices really are a game changer in terms of reliability for the system with an increased mean time between failure on the order of 15 times longer than the baseline electromechanical relays they are replacing. In terms of next steps, we have already submitted a white paper for phase 2.5 follow-on funding through the T2P program, as I mentioned earlier, and we'll be coordinating more fully with the V22 Prime to discuss some joint development efforts and qualification testing so we can transition this technology possibly through a future CC RAM upgrade. As I mentioned earlier, we've really had terrific involvement in all of our main project reviews and our technical update meetings with folks uh, throughout PMA 275. So I do wanna thank them again for being so engaged throughout this process. It's really been helpful. Outside of the Navy and the DOD, we do see massive 
potential for commercial variants of this technology to support the booming eVTOL and urban air mobility or UAM markets, uh, which are estimated to see some pretty rapid growth over the coming decade. Um, we've got a number of new platform developers that have come onto the scene over the past few years. And shown on the right there, recent projections for package and food delivery drones, as well as air taxis, are showing platform hardware sales projections on the order of about $13 billion by 2025. And that number climbs up to almost 50 billion by 2030. So the technology we're highlighting here today, along with some of our other developments in advanced battery cells and quiet electric propulsion are really well suited to capture a good chunk of that hardware market as we commercialize the new products through Electrotech, uh, which is, again is CRG's spin-off company commercializing our electric power propulsion products to eVTOL platform developers. So bringing it all together, I just want to re-emphasize that we do have multiple transition and commercialization paths that we're pursuing in parallel, and we're always looking to add more, um, not just to support the Navy's needs for the V-22 initially, but also support other DoD aircraft development efforts, as well as several commercial customer needs um, that are already bearing fruit, as I mentioned, through our spin-off company, Electrotech. As I wrap it up here, I appreciate your time watching our Tech Talk. And I really hope you check out CRG if you're looking for a really solid small business partner for any defense related needs, as well as our spin-off company Electrotech for commercial power and propulsion applications for eVTOL. Um, I do wanna mention also that CRG is really quite active in partnering with other small businesses and major defense primes on larger development efforts. Um, for any government folks who might be interested, we do have a number of active IDIQ contract vehicles with both Navy and Air Force that we can leverage across any DOD agency for rapid development. And that's um, all going back to our broad SBIR technology background as a company. So if you wouldn't mind, please do jot down my email address and feel free to reach out to either my CRG or my Electrotech email address. Uh, or at my phone number listed there at the bottom if you're interested in applying this technology to a specific application, or if you're interested in partnering on an upcoming BAA or IDIQ proposal effort. So thanks again for your time, and I hope to hear from you soon.